Welcome back guys and thanks for joining us. Today's video is about the Philippine Army's Tank Gunnery Simulator. The efficiency of troops tasked to man and to operate tanks that will be acquired by the Philippine Army will be greatly boosted with the arrival of a Tank Gunnery Simulator. Quote in quote, the simulator will help train our troops in operating the tank's main gun and its supporting weapons in various scenarios in combat with realistic conditions while in a controlled environment, end of quote, Army spokesperson Lt. Col. Ramon Zagala. He added that a tank gunnery simulator will also enhance the skills of personnel in a cost-effective manner. Last December 27, the Department of National Defense issued the Notice of Award to the joint venture of Wolfberry Asia Limited and PT Indosertis with business addresses in Singapore and Jakarta, Indonesia. The project has a contract price of 36.1 million pesos. No further information was given with regard to the visual look of the simulator, but just to give you an idea of how it may possibly look like, here are some photos of tank gunnery simulators from PT Indo Certes. The acquisition of the tank gunnery simulator only proves the serious intention of the Philippine Army to pursue its light to medium tank procurement plan and hopefully anytime soon, the winning bidders will be announced to the public. Some experts argue that the Philippine military do not need tanks in its arsenal. This is probably because of some constraints pointed out to be highly influential in achieving the desired and expected overall performance of operating tanks, one of which is the need to transport tanks from one place to another. Operating tanks may require the help of the Navy to assist in the transport. Considering the Philippines' archipelagic nature, transport via bridges won't be as effective since not all bridges in the Philippines are designed to withstand heavy tank weight. Also, transporting tanks by sea will incur more costs and expenses for the military. But apparently the Philippine military thinks otherwise and decides to go for light to medium tanks instead of main battle tanks as of the moment and especially considering some important lessons learned during the Marawi siege, where the current firepower of the armed forces of the Philippines from fire support to IFV guns were proven insufficient and unable to hit through concrete structures used as defensive positions by the enemy, which only lengthened the battle. The main contenders for the project are the K-21-105 medium tank of South Korea, the Ascod 2 of Austria and Spain, and the PT Pindad of Indonesia and Turkey. Which among the three appeals to you the most? Share your thoughts and comment down below. At this point, we would like to thank the Philippine News Agency for the news update, the Department of National Defense, PT Pindad Official, Defense Web TV, Indomilitar.com, and Munch Publishing Group. You can check out their links at the end of this video. If you like this video, please hit the like button and share this video. And also don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you won't miss any updates. Once again, this is In The Know. Thank you and the wide range firing ability, starting from its short distance firing ability for infantry up to the ability to fire at other combat vehicles. Pindad's medium tank is 30 tons in weight 70 km per hour maximum speed has a three-person capacity comprising the commander, a shooter and a driver and it also comes with its main weapon the 105mm caliber turret with great destructive power. The medium tank is equipped with various latest technologies like an independent vigilance system, hunter killer system, laser warning system, battle management system and a level 5 protection. Turret medium tank comes with a 12 munitions auto loader mechanism in the turret and 26 spare munitions inside the hull. Based on a modern combat strategy where the vehicle's ease of mobility becomes one of its strengths aside from its own abilities. The medium tank mine blast tests to implement the Stanag 3B and 4A protection level criteria according to the procedures written on Stanag 4569 in AEP 55 Volume 2. 
These tests aim to monitor the blast effect of the 10 kg TNT under the track and of the 8 kg TNT under the body. The blast test is basically done to validate the design, to ensure that the mine protection level requirements and to test the ability of the vehicle in protecting its crew from mine threats according to a set of standards, so that the crew inside can avoid injuries or fatalities. These tests aim to find out the medium tank's mobility performance in good conditions and to ensure that all design requirements and specifications are met. The tests include equipment and dimension test, track band test involving 30% slope road crossing test, the 0.6 meter upright obstacle test, the parallel beam obstacle test, the embankment obstacle test, the 45 and 60 degree uphill road crossing test, the handbrake on 45 and 60 degree uphill road test, mobility tests involving the odometer test, safe speed test and maximum speed test, the 1.6 km long 60% uphill road test, the low speed test 5 km per hour on a 10 km distance, the scattered sand crossing test, the bushy sand hills crossing test and the combat light test, the 3 by 24 hour vehicle endurance test. This firing test is held to examine the firing function of the 105 mm turret that is the main weapon of the medium tank with great destructive power. Medium tank's turret is equipped with a 105 mm caliber cannon that is able to fire various types of 105 mm caliber ammunition. The firing test was done in the tank's static mode as well as in its mobile mode. This test aims to show the lock-on ability on one point while the tank is moving, the tank's firing ability in its static condition from all sides, as well as the tank's firing ability on a static target when the tank is moving. 